Hey guys, I'm Jocelyn, pelvic floor physical therapist. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how essentially to break down your walking pattern to improve it. So if you've seen my pretty previous videos, you know of the word failed load transfer. Failed load transfer is, let me just adjust this for a moment, is when the force that starts from your feet when you hit the ground is lost somewhere as it travels up your body. Therefore, you're not getting as an efficient transfer of force from the ground up. This can happen in the foot, this can happen in the knee, it can happen in the hips, it can happen in your pelvis, it can happen in your uh, lower back, mid back, pretty much anywhere. Most common areas of failed load transfer in women who are postpartum, or what I see in practice, that in, when I say most, I say, I'm also referring to the biggest areas, so the, where most of the force is, force is lost, are the hips, the pelvis, this region, so the region, connecting your mid and lower back in the front abdominal wall. And that covers, in terms of soft tissue, the hip stabilizers, the pelvic floor, the transversus abdominis, lower fibers and upper fibers. So most common. That does, that's not to say that other areas like the foot, foot and ankle, the knee, and um, elsewhere, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It happens in those areas too, just not as big of a degree. Now, as you are going through any programs with me, you've gone through the process of understanding the components of your deep core and learning how to identify which is the biggest area of the deep core that you need to work on as you build your deep core, outer core, and dynamic core, and all as a unit. So whatever area that needs work, that's what your area of, of focus is when you're going through this. I still want you to go through the same process, meaning I still want you to do it your preferred way, and I still want you to do it just the pelvic floor, just the belly button in, and then all together, all together as hard as you can, and then remember task and demand. You don't wanna to squeeze too hard if the task does not require it, which a lot of our everyday activities do not require it. If you are working with vaginal weights, I likely had suggested that I, what I would do is I would use the vaginal weights during this type of training um, cause this would transfer over to walking and transfer over to some other functional patterns than just using the weights when you are walking. Let's say if you're not ready for that, or this is a way to build strength with a heavier weight while you use a lighter weight with walking, where you're going to use the lighter, wa wa lighter weight for endurance, but you want to build uh, thickness in the muscle to Thickness trans translates into cross-sectional area. That's a science-y word for actual strength building. So I would use a heavier weight for this. You would not use the weights for running though. If you are working on your 
uh, lower your uh, diastasis recti. You're going to use different components of your deep core brace to do this. So just keep that in mind as you're going through here. But step one to maximize your learning, just do the thing. Get the positions down first, the targets, the, just the setup, the execution, like where you're supposed to move. After that, then worry about uh, refining and focusing, honing in on areas, okay? So what I mean by that, if I'm gonna have you do a squat, I'm gonna coach you, okay? The name of the exercise is a squat. Hips sit back and down, stopping with your hips, thighs parallel to the floor, slightly below. Stand back up. That's, I'm giving you a target. Hips sit back and down, thighs parallel or slight, hips slightly lower than that. That's your positional cues, your target, your, where you're going. Then I'll say, okay, make sure your knees in a squat track over, so knees move forward over the middle of your foot. <laughs> middle of the foot, make sure the knees don't cave in. So those are directional positional cues. Where am I supposed to go? After that, once you get that down, then you refine. Okay, I want you to feel your, as you sit back, I want you to feel this in your, in the front of your thighs and in your butt. As you stand, squeeze your glutes. Now I'm bringing you into your body and telling you where you should feel this. That comes later on after you get the movements down, but you kind of kind of got to get the movements down first. So for this, I want you to do this the exact same way. Get the positions down, then refine with what I'm about to tell you. All right, so walking. The full movement is we exchange one leg, we walk forward one leg in front of the other, or hips, essentially hips width apart. I'm gonna use my shirt as a point, so you, point of reference so you can see. Notice that as I walk, you don't see much movement in my shirt, right? Now, what's the difference between this? I'm exaggerating it, but just so you can see. You can see my shirt moves up and down. Okay, so from the side, as I walk, you shouldn't see much movement in my shirt. So if you see me, and I'll actually do this from the back too. If you see me walk, and I'm exaggerating, do it from the front, you're gonna see twisting in my shirt. That's my pelvis, me losing failed load transfer in my pelvis. When I'm going like this, it's in my hip and my low back or pelvis. It could be either, it could be both. Um, another one, watch my knee here. If I'm walking and I'm snapping my knee back, it's, I'm exaggerating it, but that's what I can see if I slow you down or if it's really significant. Another one would be when I see you walk, this is your hip is rotating inward. You're likely not gonna be able to tell that, but someone like me, I can. That's failed load transfer in the hip. Um, let's say I see your shirt moving a lot, but there's no movement here. Well, you're, you're basically stabilizing here because it's not as stable down here. I hope that makes sense. In general, what we want is we want a balance across the whole body. So little, little movements that we can't really see with our eyes. So if I can see all those movements, it's too much. If we have a little bit of movement everywhere, then it's distributed and the force is able to transfer versus if it's a lot of movement, there's a lot of force potentially lost. So how do we work on this? Well, I like to break it down. First, we've got to get the positions. So when you go to heels, when you go to stand or to walk like this, first thing is your heel hits the ground then you transfer your weight over, your back heel lifts, then you push off and then you repeat that process. 
So I break this down into just that, except where people typically lose force, if it's up here, it's in this phase. So it's as you are supposed to be controlling down like this. 